The time has come to crown our queen. The winner of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars. The next queen to be inducted into the Drag Race Hall of Fame is... I'm black. Yes, honey, just when you thought I was gone, guess who's black in the house? Now, no, 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 I was not on All-Stars. I did not compete. But you know what? I know all these queens personally, and I'll be continuing to give you my completely unfiltered opinions. I call shade. It is Trinity the Tuck. Yes! Hey, Bob, you look amazing. You know what? You look amazing. We're just two ladies looking amazing in our <laughs> living rooms. With secret cartons, bitch. Trinity, we just wrapped season 12. What did you think of our winner? I mean, girl, amazing. Exactly who I thought was gonna win. I'm super <laughs> excited for her. She is going to tour the world, gagging everyone. I'm. I can't wait to work with her. <laughs> for everyone at home, this is funny to me because we actually filmed this before, so we don't know who won. But this professional bitch was like, "Bitch, that did not face me. She's amazing. She <laughs> deserves it. She's talented." <laughs> She deserves everything she's gonna get. Every, everything. But you know all these queens on All Stars, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty much friends with all of them, I think. I mean, maybe after this I won't be, because I'm gonna be real, but um, yeah, I think so, yeah. Let's go ahead and get these looks in the order they showed up in, shall we? Yeah. Shea kool -Aid. I mean, girl, the colors, the design of this, it was smart. She looks absolutely stunning. She's carrying this, this hat box. I wonder, what's in that box? What's in that Her crown. A crown. What <laughs> would've been funny if she opened it up and rose petals fall out. Because that would've been like, <laughs> I have one critique for this look. What's up with these itty bitty little titties? Little biscuit titties. You know, not every woman has big titties. So, you know, let her live her life. Whether or not she looks good is undisputed. She looks insane. Her hair, her makeup, her new teeth, her filler, I live. Do you have the new teeth? I mean, what have I not had replaced? Yes, a couple of times. <laughs> In comes Crackshin. What do you think of this look? She always has perfect hair. The silhouette is very cracker. The color looks phenomenal on her, and I love a good marabou feather kind of thing going on. I love this look. I'm not gonna lie, I liked her season 10 entrance look a little bit better, but she still looks great. Alexis Mateo, thoughts on this look? Bam! Um, it's quintessential Alexis. I've worked with Alexis for years. She, she's from Florida. Well, not originally, but she lived in Florida for many years, and she's very old school drag with these big feather duster coats. I love that she is representing her island and she looks phenomenal. It's fine. I love the statement more than I love the actual outfit. Blair St. Clair looks amazing. She does, bitch. She has transformed herself from her original season because, girl, I, I mean, looking at her from season 10 to now, like, wow. This looks couture, it looks expensive. It's fashion, it's sleek. She came in with a statement of like, I am not the same person, I am grown and I'm ready. Mariah Balenciaga. All right, I don't like this look. I don't like it. Okay, let me see what she did. She put a big white thing in the middle of her body, making the middle of her body look like the largest part of her body and her extremities look small. I don't like that she wore like a bodysuit underneath it. It looks just kind of weird. And I also don't like this hair color or style on her. I miss the Mariah Valenciaga with the, the ponytail that goes down to oh, the yeah. floor and a sickening gown. That's what I miss. That's what I remember. I want to see that fierce bitch. Okay, so India Farah said online that this is like a play on Lady Gaga's workroom entrance look. I see it with the sleeves, but that's it. Yeah, I mean, this is quintessential, old school, I make my own drag drag. And she made it known in the back, which it said old school. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little on the nose. Which nose, Trinity? The th your third or your fourth? Yeah, my, it's a little... in my 18th, girl. <laughs> a nose career. Who knew? Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> okay, as soon as Juju B walks in, my first thought is, you look amazing. That's your first thought? Honestly, I thought she looked so expensive and so amazing. You thought she looked ex Okay, look, I love Juju B. And from here up, stunting. 
But this dress girl looks literally like from Forever 21, from from the mall. So she said her old one, she looks like she worked at the mall. Now she wants to look like she owns the mall. I like it. To me, it looks like she had worked at the mall. Now she looks like she's shopping at the mall. So now I'm waiting for the <laughs> next evolution. <laughs> okay, Derek Barry. This is where the viewers are gonna realize that I have a soft spot in my heart for Derek Barry. I really like Derek Barry. So I'm gonna to try to be objective. Mama, this is garbage. This is. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. she's coming in in the Britney suit, but like, Britney's wasn't this loose. I don't know. It looks like Derek got this suit and then she lost 20 pounds and decided, well, I gotta wear it anyway. Girl, throw the outfit away. It is garbage. But let me tell you what I do live about this is that she's like, girl, I have stepped my pussy up. I'm not the same entertainer. I'm gonna show all these people who think I'm nothing but Britney Spears that I can do so much more. Girl, comes out as Britney Spears. Shocking. Also, she's wearing flats. Listen, I get it. If you, if you are someone who does impersonations or like mimic illusions of celebrities, I get it. Britney Spears probably wore flat. Mama, this is a drag competition. What part of that don't you understand? We need to see your feet five inches off the ground. Okay, that was a long-winded uh, Valentina reference. Take those things off your feet. Yes, yes. I like this. She's like, I like to keep them on, please. But as soon as Jerry walks in, I was like, I love this queen. She is about to be good TV. And bitch, she did not disappoint. I'm just like, yes. Where's the popcorn? <laughs> Mayhem Miller. Okay, did you hear the tea? By the way, I'm one to talk. Welcome to stage, Mr. One to talk. Did you hear the tea? This outfit is from Amazon. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I have the same outfit, but in black. Uh huh. Work. It was twenty three dollars, but also, bitch, twenty three dollars well spent because she looks amazing. She looks good. The girl looks good, and I don't yeah. think she looks cheap. I think she looks. Expensive for, you know, I know it's a swimsuit silhouette, but girl, many yeah. of girls have worn that st style and place. Yeah, she had one of the interest lines that I did like. I didn't come to crash the party, I came to end it. Okay, Angina, in walks a blast from 11 years ago. Angina is in the workroom. Okay, I had an idea. If I was on season one of Drag Race and I got called back for All Stars 5, I would walk back in in the exact same outfit and I would say, I just want to show these girls 11 years later, I still got it and it still fits. That is a great interest line. But all that aside, to me, she looks like the most expensive person in the room. Absolutely, and you can tell this, this costume cost a ton of money. So what was your favorite look? Girl, I'm gonna be biased here and say my sis, Shea Coulee, girl. I think I like Shea's outfit better, but the biscuit titties were driving me a little bit crazy and I could not collect anything with Angina's outfit. Let's both say our least favorite at the same time on three. One, two, three, Mariah. Derek Mariah. Yeah, I mean, well, okay, let me, let's redo it. Cause yeah, you're right. Never mind. I <laughs> it was so forgettable, I forgot about it. Okay, so let me do it again. <laughs> Oops, she did it again. So Ru walks in and announces that uh, there will be no more lip syncing for your legacy. She announces that the girl going out will be chosen by the council. So everyone's vote, it's Survivor. We're voting bitches off the island. I lit, bitch. This is what you come to All Stars to watch, bitch. You want the gag, the goof, the mystery. I want, I want, I want it to be shady. I want them to switch wardrobes, bitch. What's next? As a contestant, I'm assuming, I would be so nervous and annoyed because like, you can, all stars is, you can do well and still go home. Yep. Shangela entered the chat. Manila. Manila into the chat, you know what I mean? So how would you have reacted to this twist if it was All Stars 4? Girl, I would have been devastated. I would have been, what is happening? My life is over. But you know, it's, it, it's not me. I already did that. And so now I can just watch and make fun of all them and just, you know, laugh because it ain't me. So we dive right into a classic All Stars episode one mini challenge. The library is open, Hanny. So Rue goes, oh, pit crew, in walks Ricky Martin. What are you thinking? What is your reaction? First of all, 
He has on too much clothes. That man is fine. <laughs> so which queen do you think had the best reads and who do you think struggled? The best to me was Jujube, but she came in there and read those people from wall to paper wall. I live. I was like, this is amazing. What a plot twist. Blair had some good reads. Girl, she was there to, to slay. She was there and yeah. she was prepared. Uh, trigger warning, Trinity. Uh, there's another tie. It is between Juju B and Blair. So what do you think of this outcome? Well, I mean, typical RuPaul's Drag Race, ties everywhere, and you get a win, and you get a win, and you get a win. I'm just kidding, no. They definitely deserve to both win this because it was like, I couldn't have cho chosen. I went, you know, they both slayed everybody. So just like in All Stars Pass, we're gonna find out the first main stage challenge is the talent show, but here's a twist. It is the Work the World talent show. Wait, this is the first time they've had dancers. Like, people have been allowed to have, like, dancers in their number. That's kind of cool. I think this is a great addition to All Stars because uh, as an All-Star, you're gonna be touring around the world and some of the tours you have dancers and to be able to do that, that's a talent. It definitely adds to the show. So before we get to the talent show, we learn about some Las Vegas drama. Oh honey, the strip is hot, okay? Derek walks in and she goes, there is one drag queen I don't talk to. One, India Farrah. What is hot about this drama is it's real. It's like something that happened outside the show. You know, it, it involved her husband. And also, Angina is such a little five foot tall sister. Goes over to Derek Barry and goes, India said that you were. <laughs> I live. This seems like such a shady cast, and we are going to have fun this season. Yes. Okay, so who's your favorite in the Work for Real talent show? I had two. I I did have a tie. I, I couldn't really decide between. Oh, India you've been infected. You caught the tie. You given it. You, <laughs> everyone gets to win. Everyone gets to and win. And first time in Drag Race <laughs> history. <laughs> Girl, I lived um, for India Ferris' talent show and Alexis Mateo's. And what's weird is both of them are like high energy dance numbers with dancers, but they were like killing it. I loved yeah. I loved it. India Ferris came out and did something so amazing. It was really gaggy. She was great. I know what she can do, but every single time I see her do it, it's just like, wow. Who was on the struggle bus? Uh, there was a couple, girl. Uh, for sure, Derek and Mayhem and Angina. All three of them, they were probably, probably equal, girl. I was like, what? Okay, let's talk. Derek Berry is a really, she does really good impersonations. First of all, I don't know why she didn't do it. Derek Berry does a almost flawless Bernie Sanders. It is so good. Um, I think she just needed to structure her script better. She was just calling out names and then doing a weird thing. She was struggling. I feel like Angina was like mostly there, but like kind of running out of ideas. And then Mayhem started off so strong with the. And then she just started, girl, listen, if you're not singing fiercely like Juju B, then like just lip sync. Yeah. It's like, you, know, you ever been, you ever um, decided to start dancing at, at karaoke and then you were like, oh, this is hard. That is what happened with Mayhem. Mayhem just was not memorable. So I was living for Mariah's performance. She did like a, a, a lyrical dance to this poem, which I thought was really good. I was like, this is fierce. What did you think of it? I think that the message behind it was extremely important in the words like it just it was it was very very memorable the thing with the talent show is if you do something really serious the judges nine times out of ten there you're just gonna be safe because they want to laugh but the message behind this the performance of it was really good it was really good shay kool-aid here's my thing if you're pole dancing and it's not like insane like i'm talking up and upside down Landing in the Cooter Slam is just not that impressive, in my opinion. She looked amazing. I love the idea of a uh, pole dance, but it just, it wasn't to the level of a pole dancer that I would, you know, that I would expect. You like your strippers real professional. <laughs> Bitch, I want a stripper. I want you to break your leg, go 800 feet and drop down on your coochie, bitch. Can I say coochie? How do you feel about this? Like, as a girl who won some challenge in your season, knowing that this random girl can come in and take your $10,000 away, would that make you want to fight hard? Absolutely. So, 
you are already under pressure because you're there to prove something from my season. You made it to the top two and now you want to win the lip sync for money and also bragging rights and also to show the girls, hey, I am here to, to win. Having someone come in that could potentially take all that away and you were the winner of the challenge but yet you lost the lip sync kind of like, you know, put a fire under your ass, bro. You better work harder. But also, how hard are they gonna lip sync next week when it's $20,000? Just, I just wanna make this clear. If someone wins next week's lip sync, they will win what BB won for the entire season. I just wanna put this into perspective. You can make some money, bitch. This is all stars, bitch. I wanna go back. So, we found out the winner this week is India Farrah. Do you agree with that? For the talent show, yes. I do think that she did the best she slayed. It, it was good TV because she, wasn't that memorable in her original season and came back and it showed so much growth. It showed, she showed her talent. And so yeah. I agree, I think she won. Could you imagine the sinking feeling in Derek Berry's essence after they said, the winner is India Farah? Was she like, Girl, her booty hole fell out her ass, girl. My whole thing was like, when they were doing their little sit down talks, you know it'd been great TV. I mean, this is probably too gaggy. If any of you would have sat her down and been like, I just want you to know, you're going home today. Like, I'm picking you. Then it could have been the super gaggy. She would have sat down and been like, oh, I'm picking you. And then Derek Berry stayed. And then Derek Berry would be like, bitch, it went out the next bitch. That's why it's one of the most iconic moments in All Stars history was when RuPaul was like, Kennedy Davenport, with great drag comes great milk. Milk. So the bottom two is Mayhem and Derek. Yay or nay? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm really heartbroken and upset because I really love, I just love Derek and I want to keep seeing Derek on my TV. Well, bitch, you know what makes this setup of the new All-Stars rules. So amazing. What? All the girls, every single one of them, from the person who wins the episode, the challenge, to the girls who are safe, every single one of them votes for somebody to go home. And one of them is not gonna go home. So there are going to be people who had voted for the person who didn't go home yeah. to say, so it's gonna be more drama. You know, BB Zaharbonet would have never shown her lipstick to anyone. That's, that's she'd be hiding her <laughs> lipstick every week. So the queens are, are they're all talking about they're like pleading their cases, and Mayhem and India have formed an alliance already. Episode one, like you've been on All Stars, like would you do this kind of stuff? Would I have done that? No. I, if I'm gonna do an alliance, it would have been way more sneakier than that. Yeah, she just flat out said it. I was like, damn, girl. For any strange reason I end up on All Stars, let me tell you right now, do not trust me. Good note for me. If we ever get on an All Stars winners together, I will Super know stars. to vote you off first. <laughs> so we find out that the lip sync assassin is Evie Oddly, winner of Drag Race season 11. If you were India, would you be nervous? Absolutely. India is a phenomenal performer, but Evie is a per phenomenal performer who can do so many tricks and she can pretty much adapt that style to any genre of music. And Evie is like backflips, splits, twists, flip flops, spread eagles, one right after the other. So like it is, I would be scared. But also not super scared because it's not like she's going home. Right. Full T, when they announced Ricky Martin ice cream. I didn't even know that he affected me in that way. And I really like the song Live in La Vida Loca. So Evie wins the lip sync. Do you agree with that? Yes. She slayed it with all her performance and it was paced perfectly. She does do some iconic lip syncs. I mean, no one can deny Evie has pulled out some of the craziest in Drag Race lip sync history. I mean, Evie is living La Vida Loca. All right, sadly, someone has to go and Evie reveals after winning the lip sync that the queens have chosen Derek Barry. Do you agree with this? Would you have voted for Derek? No. Um, I would have voted for Mayhem, and this is why. Tell me more. I want to see more of that drama of Derek Berry and India, because that's going to be even more juicy as the time goes by. Secondly, I thought that Mayhem's performance was much more, like, 
no offense, ma'am, boring than Derek. I thought that Derek ha had something. She, it wasn't fully realized, but she had something. I know from my season and from this episode that Derek is so great to watch. And from what I've seen from Mayhem, she, did, she in her season, at least, she did not add a lot to the room or to the conversation. Mayhem. All right, girl, there it is. We are off to the races. Um, and I think this is gonna be a good season. I wanna thank the amazingly talented crowned queen herself, Trinity the Tuck. Thank you for joining us, girl. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is super fun. Like, is this gonna be a gag or is this gonna be a gag? Oh, bitch, it's going to be the gag of all gags of gaggery. <laughs> Listen, viewers, have your gag reflex removed. Call Dr. Zismore today. Also, thank you for joining us, Trinity, and thank you for tuning in to The Pit Stop at Home. Join us next week when we'll be watching All Stars 5, Episode 2. See you soon. Do you want everything RuPaul's Drag Race at your fingertips? Then head over to YouTube now and subscribe to the RuPaul's Drag Race channel and you will get all the episodes of everything you ever want, including brand new episodes of Whatcha Packin'. Hi.